In this video, I'm going to play Ark Survival Ascended for 24 hours straight. No sleep, no nothing. I'm going to start from nothing and see how far I can get in 24 hours. I did this all live on YouTube, and I'll have links to the streams in the description, but let's get into it. I started the 24 hours with creating my character, and I spawned in on South Zone 1. I went to go punch some trees, as you do when you start out, and got attacked by a pego, so I ran around the cliff so it would de aggro from me because it was chasing me quite far. And then I got attacked by another pego, and then I ran away to go punch another tree while getting attacked again. Come on! <laughs> Made some tools, but I would almost been killed by a pego right off the bat, but we also found a bunch of dodos. Tons of dodos were spawning and I was killing them all to get as much hide as I possibly could. There was just so many everywhere and I made some spears too so I could just kill all of them. It's pretty uh, brutal but yeah. I made a full set of cloth armor as well as I had some bolas made as well so I could tame stuff and defend myself as well as I made a bow and arrow. And then I quickly replaced my hide armor or my cloth armor with some hide armor because I had enough hide to make it from all the dodos that I had killed and then I equipped it and then I got attacked by another pego. What? A bullet? It doesn't even do anything. After that, wouldn't you know it, another pego decided to attack me and I had to run away from it. Oh no, okay, he's running. We're good. Nope. Okay, well, I guess we have a pego now. Next, I wanted to tame a parasaur so I could have something to gather berries with and travel. But it didn't really go well because I tried using a slingshot, which did more damage than torpor, and it ended up just running off. After that, I wanted to tame a moss chop. So moss chops are great because they can get tons of fiber, as well as tons of berries, and you can ride them pretty early game. They're really easy to tame. So I found one that I wanted to tame, and it got attacked by a bunch of dillos. The one thing with moss chops, though, is they asked for a random food, and what it asked for me for was rare flowers, which I did not have. I tried taming another parasaur by bullying it and using a slingshot on it, which was not a good idea. I shouldn't be using a slingshot on it. It worked for me in the past, but right now, every time I try and use it, it kills it. I should have been using a club instead, which I would learn later. After that, I made some parachutes and decided to go get this green job. And once I got the green job, I had a shield and some long grass, as well as a bunch of wool, which weighed me down, but I just threw it on the ground. And then I tamed a moss chops. So this time it wanted tinto berry, so I was easily able to tame it. After that, we named it Mozzie from someone in the chat suggesting it, and then this happened. Oh, the Titanosaur is here. Uh, he's coming down here, I think. Hello. I think it's huge, dude. After that, I made a raft. I needed a raft so I could get to where I wanted to build my base, which was at the top right corner of the map near the Hidden Valley area, so I decided to build a little platform on here. I didn't make it too big because I didn't need anything huge, and I didn't want to spend a bunch of time building resources to make it that big. I did a stair on the side so I could easily get dinos up and walk it up pretty easy myself. I made a storage system, just one little storage, and a refining forge to cook some metal. I had metal smelting on the way there, but not that much because I couldn't find any river rocks where I was, and then I eventually made a campfire so I could just start cooking a bunch of food, but then I had a quite Bro. close encounter with this capro. Why can't I bowl of them? Come on, yes! Oh my gosh! That, uh... I thought you could bowl of Capros. I should stop harvesting them and just get out of here. After that, I made a bed, which I definitely should have made before I got attacked by that Capro, but at least it didn't kill me, so that's good. Then I decided to go to Carno Island, where I saw this blue drop that I wanted to go get. I opened it up, had some pretty decent stuff, like 100 pelt, 80 oil, and 41 keratin, which would all be useful pretty early in the game. Then I decided to go get some river rocks on here. I couldn't find any. Basically, if you don't know river rocks, they give a small amount of metal, which is a really good early game, because you can get metal without having to go to the mountains and get it. Another blue drop spawned right next to me, I opened it up and got some chitin gauntlets and fur chest peaks, which would both be useful later, as well as I got the metal smelted down from my refining forges, which I was allowed me to make a smithy. The smithy I was used to able to make a metal pick, which I could get more metal from these river rocks more efficiently with it, which would end up being really useful. I went to the Hidden Valley area, but I decided just to build on the beach, as well as I killed these raptors that were over here as well, pretty easily with the bolas. After that, I made a full set of chitin armor. I got all this chitin from killing a trilobite and harvesting it with the moss chops, which gave me a stupid amount of chitin, as well as I had a bunch more metal, which I used to make 
some more stuff like a crossbow. After this, I decided to start working on my base. So harvesting a bunch of wood with my new metal hatchet. I've decided to tame a parasaur once again, this time using a club, which was definitely a way better method because I was able to knock it out without killing it and do it relatively quickly as well. I went and got some more wood because I needed a ton of wood for my base and I was just stockpiling a bunch of it, as well as I made a pike with some of the metal I had. Once the parasaur tamed up, I made a saddle for it as well as I named it and we had a full guy that we could go use to harvest berries and travel with if I needed to. And then I just laid it, started laying out the foundation of my little house. I made 20 foundations and made it look like this. It's a pretty big platform for the starter base, but I wanted to make it as compact as possible. I started building up the walls. I had this little indent in the front so I could have like a porch and then I'll have an overhang with a loft in it. You'll kind of see how it works later in a second. But I also made it two walls high so I could have plenty of room to do stuff inside. I took a break from base building because I saw a yellow drop on Carnot Island that I wanted to go get. So I went to it and opened it up and it had two fur boots as well as an electric prod which I wouldn't be using. I found another moss chops to tame right next to my base. I decided to tame another one. He's only level 7 though. Then I started expanding my base even more, adding the loft on the top here. You can see what it looks like. And the roof isn't finished yet but we're going to build that just now. I added some sloped roofs to the side and filled the entire thing up with sloped roofs. And to make it more like not as flat, I added this little overhang to my roof with the new pointed triangle roofs are arc ascended and it looks pretty cool. I wanted to add pillars to the sides but I didn't do that now because they're kind of expensive early game and I would add those pillars for details later. This is what it looks like on the inside, the loft, I think it looks really cool. So yeah, the base turned out pretty pretty cool. And then I added a bed to the loft area, built, moved my smithy and my refining forge inside. I added these double doorways to the outside to make it look like it was holding up the overhang so it didn't look like it was just floating as well as I moved the storage bin inside as well. I added this fireplace I got from a drop and the mortar and pestle into the base. I then placed a preserving bin as well that I had made up on the side there and I added a war map which I think I got from a drop. I then found another supply crate in Kano Island and it gave me a little bit better crossbow and some food as well. I made some trank arrows because I was in need of those. I also got some from a drop as well so I had a decent amount of uh, trank arrows. I went to go on an adventure with my parasaur and immediately got attacked by raptors and you'll just see what happens. Come on, please don't kill it. Okay, that adventure lasted about 5 seconds. I decided to just go on my adventure on foot. The adventure was to go tame an RG. I didn't care what level, I just needed something because I really wanted a spyglass and I needed a way to get to the top of the mountain, so anything that could fly that could get me there would be useful. I decided to tame this RG, had no idea what level it is, because of course I don't have a spyglass, but I found out it was level 10, which is why it knocked out so fast. Easiest RG tame of my entire life. But we got that guy knocked out and fed up. After that, I went back and I found a Pteranodon that was level 50 next to my base. I decided to tame it, it took one shot to knock it out, and it was easily out. It was this really bright blue, and it looked really cool. I then decided to kill a Bronto. I needed a bunch of hide and I was running low, especially to make an RG saddle, so I killed this Bronto right here, which wasn't that hard because it was a really low level one. After that, I harvested it for hide, got about 100 from it, which was pretty useful. I then made the RG saddle with the chitin I had from that one trilobite. And then the RG tamed up level 14, not that good, but it can fly, so I'll use it to go tame another RG later. But that was our RG tamed up, and I went to the mountain to go get some crystal. I started harvesting crystal for my spyglass this entire time, even though it seems like it hasn't been that long, I've been wanting a spyglass really bad. And now I had the ability to make one and it was super useful because I could see the levels of any creature now. And then I went to Carno Island, I was going to get this gold drop but it disappeared, but then I found a 130 RG which I was insanely happy about because high levels on the island are extremely rare and the fact I almost instantly found a 130 RG made me really happy. It was attacking an alpha raft there and almost got itself killed so I went over there and led it away. We managed to save it from killing itself, which was nice. And then I moved it all the way over to this side of the map, so that way, or to this side of the island anyway, so I could start knocking it out. And I started tranking it, but it went towards the water. And this happened. No! Wait, please. Please let it be. Just. There's no way. Yeah, dude. It's gonna drown. No! 
I was really devastated by this because high levels on the island are extremely rare to find and it was super lucky to find a 130 right off the bat so I was kind of worried it would take me forever and it did take me forever to find another high level I searched for ages although they were like level 10 15 20 is absolutely pathetic I went to the mountain near the volcano kept searching and after like 20 minutes I found another 130 I was really happy about this but I checked around the surrounding area just to be sure and I found a 145 as well so I decided to go for this 145. I started knocking it out with my trank arrows, getting headshots, just to kind of circling it around here. And it eventually started running off. And so I started chasing it and it went straight into the forest. And I decided to pull a move, which was kind of stupid, but I thought it would work. I jumped off, parachuted and tried to get a hit on it, but I missed and it went into the forest. After that, I went searching for it and I could not find it. I was searched for like 10 minutes. Uh, it was completely gone and it didn't say it knocked out on the tracker. So I went for the 130 instead. That and I moved it up higher, clo closer to the mountains, so that way I didn't get lost in the forest again. And eventually it started running, and it passed out in midair, and it landed in a somewhat safe spot, so that was really good. While it was taming, I made a quick trip back to my base to repair my Chiatin armor, because the RG broke it all. And I took the moss chops, because it gathers a bunch of Chiatin to the Carno Island, and this happened. Oh crap, why is- no, don't run out of stamina- no, dude. It's gonna die. Why do I have to run out of stamina right there? Please kill it, please. I was kind of annoying because I then lost my moss chops. The reason I even took it there is because there was Pumlio Scorpius there that I could harvest with it in order to get some Chiatin to repair the armor. So I just had to do it with my hatchet instead. And I was also scared that my RG was going to die because my RG is only level 10. And as you can see, it almost did die. So that was pretty scary. But then I went back to my base and repaired my Chiatin armor and got it all back on. And then I started heading back, but I also stopped at this beaver dam and got a bunch of smending paste from it. You get These beaver dams give a ton of smending paste and you can just steal it all. And then I went to the volcano just visiting and found a level 75 giga just chilling there in the lava so that was cool and then I went back and my RG was all tamed up. Also ate during this time. The fact that the RG took so long I sat next to it for quite a while and I ate during that time so that was nice. And now I had my RG which had some really good stats. I went back to my base and finally made a water jar. I don't know why I didn't have one already. And then I also the pteranodon tamed is really blue like really bright blue. And then I went to go on my first metal run with my new RG now that I could actually carry all the metal. And then I built some more refining forges so that way I could smelt all the metal faster. And I had about 150 raw metal in each of them. I returned to the same beaver dam to take all the wood from it. I needed a bunch of wood so I could expand my storage system. And it was all just sitting there for free and I could actually carry it now with my new RG. And I started expanding my storage system. This was just the first row. I was going to add another row on top with these little like half quarter things. And then I started making a full set of flak armor with all the metal that had just been smelted. And we had a full set of metal looking absolutely snazzy. And I'm very glad I got this. And next I built a fabricator with some of the oil I got from that blue drop early on. And that obviously is a great thing. I got the fabricator in this nice little area right here. That it fit perfectly in. And then I went to Carno Island to kill that Alpha Raptor that I saw that was originally attacking that 130. And I needed the XP from it. Also got an Explorer note, so I was going to get more XP from it. As well as the Raptors give you drops like crossbows and hatchets and stuff. Which I managed to get a really decent crossbow, like an Apprentice one and a Journeyman hatchet. Which would both be useful early game, especially that crossbow. Killing that Raptor gave my RG an insane 25 levels, which would end up being super useful because we just tamed this guy up. And then I went back to the base and built a feeding trough so I could, you know, feed my dinos. Quite useful. And then I went and built a long neck rifle with some more metal that I had smelted up. And then I also had a scope I got from a drop as well. It's just like some random yellow drop, I think, that gave me a scope. So that was cool. As well as I went and got a purple drop, which gave me a pretty good pickaxe as well. I then finished the last row of my storage system, gathered a bunch of wood for it, and I had this huge storage system. Chat was making fun of me, saying it was overkill, but this was going to last me for the whole 24 hours, and that was a lot of storage that I needed. There's a level 55 Bronto right next to my base, and I decided to tame it up. They give you tons of berries because their tail attack has a bunch of range, and you can get tons of berries with it, and they all have a ton of weight as well, so you can get tons of narco berries which is the reason I wanted to tame this guy. And he ended up knocking out literally right next to my base. So that was perfect. We're also about five hours in, and I was having a lot of fun still. Had a lot of energy. Then I got this yellow drop on Grano Island that gave me a really good pike, some scuba flippers, and a sickle. All of those would be really useful. 
And then I found an Alpha Carno on my way back and decided that I would kill it. So it took me a little bit to kill, but it wasn't too hard. And I ended up getting a really good Journeyman crossbow out of it that had 180% damage, which is really good and better than my Apprentice one. And then I went on a metal run once again with my RG, brought it back. But on my way back, I found this purple drop that had a ramshackle long neck rifle, which is really good. I mean, it's not the best, but it's still useful. Then I put all the metal I got back in the refining forges and went to go find something to tame. Then I found an Enki. wanted to tame an Enki because they give you tons of metal with their harvesting ability. So, and they also have a weight reduction on metal as well. And then I went and found another drop, and this one gave me a 250% damage crossbow blueprint, which was Ascendant. Absolutely great. I'm going to work on making that later. And then I tamed this, or knocked out the Anki. I brought it back to my base, just dropped it down, and started knocking it out, and it knocked out pretty easily. And then the Bronto tamed as well. I took the Bronto for a little spin and got some berries with it, and it gets a ton of berries. This thing was definitely worth taming, as you can see right here. And I made a bunch of narcotics with those berries. I then expanded by a little loft area so I could fit the new thing I built, which was a generator, and I put it up here. So that way I could just have more room in my little base. I wanted to keep it as compact as possible. Then I built some fur armor because I wanted to go to the Arctic and I needed fur, of course. I also had a few Mastercraft pieces of fur. I just built the rest of the armor set. I then went to the Arctic with my moss chops to go get some organic polymer from penguins, even though I thought moss chops could get a bunch of organic polymer, but they actually sucked horribly. So I just ended up using my pike to get it, which didn't get that much, but it was a decent amount. Then I found this 145 mammoth, so I decided to tame it. Mammoths are really good because they get a bunch of thatch, but mainly they get a bunch of wood as well. You can also get tons of berries if you don't already have something like a bronto. So I decided to tame the mammoth up instead so I could get a ton of wood with it, and it was pretty easy to knock out. I didn't have the food to tame the mammoth, so I started heading back to base to get some mega berries to tame it, and I just let it star because it has plenty of torpor. I then went to Carno Island and grabbed a supply drop which had a mammoth saddle, so absolutely perfect as I'm taming one. And then I started heading back with my food to tame it, went and fed it, and it still was going to take forever to tame. It starved a little bit, but it still needed more time. I also brought with me the materials to make cryopods and a cryo fridge. So I built all of those up. I've been saving up so I can make these guys. And now we had about 7 cryopods in total I was able to make, which was going to be good for now. On my way back, I found a red drop, and this was a pretty good red drop, as it gave me an Ascendant Acro Saddle, which I didn't even realize you could get from these drops, as well as Riot Boots and a Helmet, so I had some new armor pieces with the new Acro Saddle. I then placed the Cryofrage in my base once I got back, and it has a 5 minute timer before I can use it. I then placed a simple bunk bed back in my base. The bunk beds make it to where you can respawn multiple times if you do manage to die in quick succession, which hopefully I won't have to. I crafted the Ascendant Crossbow from the blueprint I had gotten from that drop, and it is really good. It's definitely worth making and will allow me to knock stuff out super quickly. Also, the Anki had tamed, and after all of that, chat decided to name it Meat, which, uh, yeah, Meat, I think, is a pretty dope name. Anyway, after that, I took Meat on his first metal run to the mountain right next to us, and I started harvesting as much metal as I could possibly carry. These things have a huge weight reduction on metal, so it made it way easier, and I got, as you can see, got quite a lot of it. I then went to get a red drop from Carno Island. I always get red drops when I see them, and I got a Mastercraft Riot Helmet. I then went to the Mammoth, which had taken forever to tame, but it finally did. Chat named it Bob, and I cryopotted it up and brought it back to base. Once I crowdpotted it out, I took it on a journey to go get some wood and got thousands of wood with it relatively easily. I then finally found an acro from our conditions mod, which I didn't realize this at the time, but I would realize it later that the spawns were completely screwed up on here. I guess it's a single player thing, but rexes weren't spawning. A lot of the creatures from our conditions weren't spawning. And later I would have to do a dino wipe to fix this, and I'll tell you when that happens. But of course, it was really annoying, and this was the first acro I found. Anyway, then I opened a red drop and got some pretty good gear with the riot chest piece, and then I killed a Rhino Natha on my way back. It was a low level male, and I got the pheromone from it, so if I wanted to tame a Rhino, I could. I then found an Ovis, which I just decided to pick up. They're really rare, but they give you mutton, which is the best food for feeding carnivores in the game, and I didn't want to let it go to waste. So I eventually just brought it back to my base, and then I killed it and harvested it and put it in a preserving bin so I could keep the mutton. It spoils really quickly. I then got this purple drop, which gave me Mastercraft Flat Gauntlets, which is pretty good. I was in the Arctic to go get oil, looking for sabers, which you'll see in this video. Finding high-level sabers is literally impossible. I got some oil while I was here in the Arctic biome, which is what I needed. And then I used that oil and some metal I got to make an industrial grill. 
And then using the wood I'd gathered from earlier with my mammoth, I used to make those pillars I was talking about to detail my base out. In Arc Ascended, you can place pillars on the sides of things and they snap really easily. You can also put them diagonally, which makes them look really good. As you can see right here, this is what the base looks like with the pillars added. I think it just adds a little bit more detail and is good if you want to detail your base a little bit more, you can just outline it with pillars. I then did a dino wipe which fixed some of the spawns for now anyway and it spawned in an ascendant acro on carno island level 90 which i wanted to tame but not right now i didn't even know these ascendant acros existed the difference is they have spots on them also rex has started to spawn which to this point i literally had only seen one not a single other rex on the map so that's you know the spawns were broken so they were finally spawning in but they were all low level as you can guess so i killed them and then there was an alpha rex on carno island so i decided that i would go and try and kill it with my rg it took a little bit but eventually after pecking at it i eventually managed to kill it didn't really give me any good loot though I did manage to get the little helmet from it or the skull of it and I put it up on the base. I found spinos that were finally spawning in, also no spinos had been spawning to this point, so I decided to kill them for their drops. I found a red ring drop which all it gave me was a Tuso saddle and a Tuso blueprint. I found more spinos to kill for their sails and then I found another red drop which also gave me another Tuso saddle. So all I was getting was Tuso saddles which they're kind of hard to tame so I don't know if I was going to tame one. And then I was looking for berries to go in caves, and all of them were low level. This is the island and how it works. I just get terrible levels. I couldn't find one over level 100, so I just killed all of them to refresh the spawns. I was searching for berries for so long, and yet I found three 130 spinos and one 125 spino. So creatures I don't want to tame spawn in extremely high levels. But then I went back to base after lat and made a refrigerator. I also found this purple ring drop that gave me a 321% damage ascendant crossbow, which was absolutely insane. I went back to my base and immediately got the resources to build it. It was quite the upgrade and it's going to help me tame stuff. I then went to go find a high level saber. I wanted a saber for caving and I spent like 40 minutes searching for one. This was honestly the hardest part of the 24 hours. I was searching for high level creatures. It just was so draining, so boring because no high cre level, level creatures would spawn. And it just made me feel like I was wasting time looking for high level creatures when I could be doing other stuff. Like I was just looking for these high levels. So it was really annoying and it took forever to find a high level saber. And I didn't even find a high level. I found a 120. That was the 110 was the max level saber that I found. So I just settled for the 110 because it's the highest level I could find after 40 minutes of searching. And I was just so done looking for them. So I just tamed it up. And then I didn't even pick it up. I just forgot to bring it with me and I went really far without even noticing. So I had to go back. But because of that, I found this purple drop that gave me a Mastercraft double barrel shotgun, which is actually really good and ended up being pretty useful. I then brought it back to base and killed a few things with it before I went and found another red drop, which gave me these elevator platforms, which are actually insanely useful. And I'll show why they're useful here in a second. But I took the saber to go level it and test it out, and it was absolutely garbage. It just made me feel terrible because I just wasted 40 minutes to go tame this saber. That was horrible. But then I found a red ring drop that was stuck in the ground, so I tried to get it and accidentally jumped off the cliff. Luckily, there was a ledge that caught me, but I managed to get some really good riot uh, gauntlets out of that. 500 armor. And then I found another red drop that gave me a fabricated sniper, which I would use for taming the acro. And then I went and found some more Rexes. They were horrible levels to be expected because that's how the island is. And the few Rexes that have spawned on the island have all been terrible, so I went and go killed them. On my way back home, I was stopped by the volcano and found a level 15 Karchar. I wish it was higher because I would have tamed it, but I decided to just kill it instead to refresh the spawns and get a Giga Heart. I used the volcano to basically get it in the lava and burn it to death over time because I couldn't kill it any other way. And I got a free Giga Heart out of it. Then I went and used the Saber for, to kill an Alpha Raptor to see if, how good it actually was. And it's terrible. Just like I got from earlier. It, the Alpha Raptor almost killed it. It didn't stand a chance at all. So I had to go kill it with my RG. I then made an elevator track, which is what I need the elevator platforms for. If you place these elevator platforms down and then demolish them, it gives you a free 200 metal, 50 polymer, and a bunch of cementing base too. That's why they're so good because you can get a bunch of them out of drops and you can just get free resources from it. I then made some stone gateways as well as some that I got from drops and some bear traps. And then as well as I started making a bunch of bullets for my fabricated sniper because I wanted to go tame that acro. I made about 80 bullets as well as I had my shotgun and my uh, long neck rifle as backups. But that was what I think I needed to tame it all. I started building my trap up. It can destroy stone with one of its attacks, but it's not going to t destroy it really quickly. So I should be able to tame it fast enough to where I can actually do it before it it breaks the trap and then i put some bear traps in there as well to get it trapped and then i let it over and it took a few tries but eventually i got it in the trap and then i went behind it and put the gateways in so that way it would be completely surrounded and could not move this would make it way easier and is one of the reasons i might have been able to tame it 
because the trap would make it super easy. Now I need to explain how to actually tame this. Basically, you just shoot it on the side, like while it's doing a shield stance, and then it will roar, and then you go to its mouth and then feed it narcotics, and it will start to pass out. The thing is, it also does this roar that makes it look like it's about to pass out, like it's like the tire door thing. To me, I thought that meant that it was about to pass out and I needed to feed it. But that's not actually what it means. When it does that roar, it means that it's about that you should not feed it, and that if you do, it's gonna do the vicious roar, which does thousands of damage, knocks everything back, and stuns you. And it took me forever to realize that that was not like I wasn't supposed to feed it during then. I thought that meant it was about to pass out. So you'll see that uh, it took me forever to learn that in the footage. Yes. Yes. Okay. It didn't let me feed it. Oh, that's that fear sword thing. What are you doing? Oh my gosh, my animals are they have like a death sentence. they have a death wish. Okay, I don't really care about that. I completely ran out of bullets for my fabricated sniper when I realized how the taming actually worked. Okay, to be fair, it was like 1 o'clock in the morning and I'd been playing for 12 hours straight, so give me a break, but uh, I had to use my long neck rifle and shotgun instead, and I didn't have much bullets for my shotgun either, so I had to just go between the two. Sleepy time. Yes! Yes! Oh my gosh, yes! <laughs> Dude. Oh, I wasn't like talking at all. I was so focused because I thought I was going to screw it up. As you can see, I was pretty excited from taming that thing. I'm surprised I was that excited because I'd literally been playing the game for 12 hours straight and it was 1 o'clock in the morning. But I did manage to knock it out and finally tame it. But after that, and it did tame, uh, I crowd potted it, brought it back to my base, threw it out, and the game crashed, and it crashed my stream as well. Which is why you're wondering if you looked at the stream and it was two different streams, that's because that crashed it. For, I haven't really crashed at Arcus in it at all, but the thing is, when using mods, the game can crash, and the modded, throwing, like the modded acro basically crashed the game, so yeah. I decided to name it Carnage, which I think was a pretty cool name, and I was very happy to finally have this guy tamed up. I then took it on to kill an Alpha Carno, just so I could get it leveled, and it gave me 35 levels, so I was able to level it up quite a bit. After that, I swam it back to base, because I wasn't going to try and cry pod and crash my game again, and crash the stream again, so just to be safe, I just swam it back. I made some scuba gear so that way we could go underwater because we haven't done any underwater stuff yet but before that i took meat on a metal run to the volcano and i just went up here and harvested all the metal that was up here and we got quite a bit as you can see right here tons of metal that we could use after that i went searching for megalodons i just took a quick peek before i would go searching again but all the levels were horrible so yeah not really much to see down here after that, I went to Carno Island, and I found a unicorn. A unicorn on Carno Island. I didn't realize they could spawn here. I'm assuming the unicorn spawns just spawn anywhere on the map, and now where Equus is spawned, because Equus can't spawn on Carno Island. Anyway, I brought it back to my base and decided to tame it up. All I had was Savaru, and that seemed to work and tame it, so that was nice. I then went on a search for Megalodons, and once again, all the levels were absolutely horrible. I couldn't find anything over level 25, and I found like... 15 or 20 megalodons. I'll save you the time, but eventually I found a 125 that was on the other side of Carno Island. I used my insanely good crossbow to knock it out in just a few shots. It was super easy to tame up. I found a purple drop, which gave me a really good harpoon gun, which would actually be really useful considering we were doing underwater stuff. Some acros spawned on Carno Island, so I killed them, and one of them had a baby, which I didn't realize was possible for acros to have, so you could just claim the babies without having to do anything. So I just claimed one up. And after that, there was a supply drop, and I grabbed it, and it had a pretty good flak helmet, but my Riot one was better. After that, I tested the Harpoon Gun, and it does a lot of damage. 1,000, that's insane. And then I went back to base and made a Megalodon saddle. And then right next to my Megalodon was a 115 Rex. Now, that does kind of a low level, but 
I decided to tame it at this point because I'd been searching for a Rex for 13 hours now and that was the highest level I could find. Also with the spawns being messed up, it was really rare for one to spawn in the first place. But I really easily got it knocked out with my insane crossbow. But then I went down and there was the Megalodon there, put him saddled on him and then we went around and killed some stuff and then I swam all the way back to my base which wasn't too far so it was pretty quick, I just had my RG following me. And then I went up and this happened. What? How did my... How did my Megalodon die? Bro, I just got that guy. Why is there so many Megalodons? So the fact I've been playing for 13, 14 hours and then my Megalodon that I just tamed getting killed was really getting quite annoying, but I decided to tame this level 90. It wasn't nearly as good as the one I just had, but it was the highest level I could find. I just needed something for the water. I grabbed this red drop which had a compound bow that was pretty good. It wasn't the best, but it is pretty decent. And then I went to the volcano and there's a level 15 giga there. Of course it was super low level. I wanted to tame one, but that wasn't high enough level, so I decided to kill it. And it just brought it into the lava multiple times until it died and then I got its giga heart. And then I went back and then my rex was tamed at Carno Island, but it almost got killed by two rexes that ganged up on it. And nearly killed it, but I managed to save it with my RG. I then swam it back to base because I didn't want to risk the cryopod crashing my game again. And once I did, I just got it all the way back after swimming it across there. And then the Megalodon tamed up as well, and I brought it back. I then went searching for Rexes for a long time, like probably an hour or so, and I couldn't find any high levels. The spawns seemed to be working though, which was great, because the entire time the spawns were kind of messed up. So I'm glad they started working again, but the Rexes were so low level, and I felt like I was wasting time looking for Rexes. So I decided to go do some underwater stuff now that we had our Megalodon that I tamed before. And once I did, I found an Alpha Megalodon close to my base, and I decided to try and kill it for XP, which I did, and it gave me a pretty decent number of levels, which I could use to level up. Then there was a 130 Megalodon, which I decided I would tame up, because it'd be way better than my current one. And I just, you know, easily knocked it out with my crossbow. Next, I found a level 75 Tuso, as well as I found an Alpha Mosasaur, and this gave me a plan. If I could kill that Alpha Mosasaur somehow, it would give me 100 Black Pearls, which I could use to tame a Tuso, because in order to tame a Tuso, you need Black Pearls. So basically, I would just shoot it with my harpoon gun and try to shoot it and do bleed damage with my megalodon. Seems like it'd be pretty easy. I searched the area and it was completely clear, and then I started shooting it and getting it killed. I thought I would easily be able to do this, but then all of this happened. No! Oh my gosh. Eels are literally the worst thing added to this game, bro. Alpha Megalodon, the entire freaking earth is like just spawned on top of me. What the heck? Oh, uh. okay, now I have to kite them all away. Look how much stuff there is. I tried healing up, but all I had was fish meat, which of course is all I can get with the Megalodon, and it barely heals at all. So I sat there forever, and then the Megalodons would come back and drain my health again, so it was completely pointless. So that was really annoying, so basically I had no health going back into it. Nope. Too so freaking... Cha no, 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 no. I was so far away. That is some bullcrap. I was so far away from that too, so I cannot believe that it actually caught me. Like, I literally what? This was really demotivating because I was already extremely tired. I'd been playing for 15, 16 hours straight. It was around 4 in the morning. This was easily, like, the hardest part of the challenge because I was just so demotivated, so tired, and was not having any of it because every time I, I tried to do anything, the game would just, you know, be like arc and just really annoy me, so... That was that, so I just decided to go back to my base after that. At this point, it was insanely tired. I think it was around 5 o'clock in the morning. I'd been playing for like 15, 16 hours. I was really, really tired, so I just put my headphones on and started listening to some music. I wasn't really talking much, even though I was live streaming. 
but I was kind of just chilling out. I wasn't talking much because I was really too tired. But while I was doing that, I was expanding my base and building with what, while I was listening to music. I built this some spiked walls and surrounded my entire base with them so nothing could get in. Also, I just wanted to have an enclosed base. And then I built a little trap this so I could way I could like bring dinos to the base and trap them and drop them in there. I also built an irrigation system. I already had it from a drop. And this is what the base looked like once I was finished with the trap and the behemoth gates and all this stuff. It was really nice and I think it was a really good expansion. And then I went to across the map to go get silica pearls. I was too lazy to go underwater and get them. So I just went over here and I didn't really get much at all. And then on my way back I found a red drop with some pretty good leggings. And then I went back and I was working on making a chemistry bench but I needed way more silica pearls in order to make the electronics needed. I then went back on my megalodon and I needed to go pick up the other megalodon I knocked out hours before and I finally went and got him and then I decided to go and try and kill the alpha moza again. Tuso better not come over here though. Okay it's already bloody, yeah this is a good... Go 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 go! What are you doing? Do you want me dead? Oh, the alpha. He's dead. It's dead. I just need to get the black pearls off of it. I'm going to upgrade my weight because I those black pearls are going to weigh a ton. Look at that, a hundred black pearls. So we managed to kill the Alpha Mosasaur and secured the black pearls at the loss of our Megalodon, but it was fine because we still had the 130 Megalodon. But now that I had the black pearls, it was time to actually tame the Tuso. In order to tame a Tuso, you have to sacrifice one of your creatures by letting it grab to it and attack it. And then you have to swim up to its mouth and feed it black pearls. And it takes 50 at a time, but since it's a level 75, it should instant tame. But if I mess this up, then my Megalodon will die and I will probably die along with it. Come on. Yes! Let's go. Squilliam Fancy Sun. I took Squilliam Fancy Sun back to base, and then I named the Megalodon Megabyte 2. We, the first Megalodon was named Megabyte, I forgot to mention that, but yeah, now that it's dead, we have the second one. I took the Tuso out for a spin once I got back to base, and it's really good and really strong. I went to the Arctic Biome for Silica Pearls, but first I f fought this uh, little Tuso over here and killed it with relative ease. And then I went into the cave in order to get some Silica Pearls. This cave has a bunch of Silica Pearls you can get really easily and just pick them up with your hands which I needed some for that chemistry bench I was talking about and then I started heading back to base and on my way I picked up this drop which had some elevator platforms which made me very happy because they're really good for resources all I needed left for the chemistry bench was crystals so I went up to the mountain real quick and harvested some with my Anki and made the chemistry bench and placed it down this would allow us to make spark powder and gunpowder and narcotics super easily I used the gunpowder in order to make some more bullets for my rifle which I was running out of and then we decided to go take on the artifact of the Skylord cave, the small ice one. Oh, I got mega rabies. That's not what I wanted. Move! I haven't seen any drops in here though. That's not, that's not good. I don't know. I don't like this. Ah! 
Oh my gosh, I, why is this game like this? At this point, it was around like 8 in the morning, and we were like 20 hours in. There was about like 5 or 4 hours left, and I was really, really motivated again. Obviously, after like taming that Tuso and stuff, it really brought back my motivation, so I was having a lot of fun, and I decided to go on a little taming spree. First, we found this 120 Spino, which I thought would be cool to tame, and then after a while, I knocked him out. It was kind of, he just ran a wet, like ran all over the place, but eventually I got him to pass out. And then I found this day down that was level 135, I decided to tame it as well. It wasn't that hard, just knocked it out with my new, my crossbow. After that, it tamed, it was like 30 or 40 minutes it took for both of these guys to tame, it was absolutely crazy. But chat uh, decided to name it Spoon, everyone wanted it to be called Spoon, so that is our Spino. And then we brought my boy Spoon all the way back to our base. And then I went looking for some Rexes again, and... There was no high levels at all, and it kind of was demotivating finding so little lower rexes. I eventually gave up. Just finding rexes on here was impossible. And then I got some beaver dams. I wanted to get silica pearls, and I got silica pearls from a few of them, I think, but we got a bunch of spending paste as well. I went to the volcano. I wanted to tame a Giga or Karchar during this, but I could not find a high level one, and they were rarely spawning. So I killed this level 10 Karchar because there's no point. Maybe I could refresh the spawns or something so I could find another one, but I was really looking forward to taming either a Karchar or a Giga, but there's no high levels. After that, we got the, the saddle for Spoon, and now we could ride him around a bunch. It took Silica Pearls, which is why I was going out for those beaver dams, but we got it. After that, I went to the Carno Island and was looking around for a little bit, and we managed to find a high level Saber. That's a 145 Saber. There's no way I'm seeing this correctly. Well, I've only killed like a thousand sabers. I'd literally been looking for high level sabers for these entire 18 hours. And obviously the earlier I had like tamed a low level one because I was sick of looking for them. So the fact I found a 145 is absolutely crazy. And I was happy to finally find one. I was in the Arctic when I found a 115 direwolf. I decided I would bring it back to my base and tame it. The saber was in the pen so I kind of had to take it out and knock it out. But it ended up working. I went back to Colonel Island because that baby acro I claimed was still there, so I decided to swim it back through my base, and I named him Little Timmy. After that, I made some grapple hooks. I had a plan for something I wanted to tame, and I needed these grapples for it. But before that, I um, also tamed the direwolf as well. Here is what I wanted to tame. It was a Quetzal's level 95 right next to my base, and they're really hard to tame solo because they don't land and they fly super high in the sky. So the method I used was using parachutes and then grappling to my RG, and then I would whistle attack target on the Quetzal, and then as the RG was following it, I would shoot it with tranq arrows. I'd never done this before, and I wasn't sure if it was even going to work, but it ended up being pretty successful. We just went around here. Part of what made it successful is the fact I had this really good crossbow that would knock it out super quickly, and it only took like of 10 shots i think so it was pretty quick and it ended up knocking out and it landed in a pretty safe area too we had the quetzal down and officially i was 22 hours in which meant i had two hours left and i was feeling super motivated now that i got this quetzal knocked out on my way back i found a 125 stary that i wanted to tame my plan was to tame the quetzal and then carry it back into my trap so i had to wait for the quetzal to tame before i could do that I came back with more narcotics to keep it asleep, but it can't, went inside of the mesh, so I kind of just had to wait for it to tame before I could do anything. And then once it tamed, I named him Jason, and then cryopodded him up, because I couldn't bring him out the normal way. I was still scared to use cryopods because of the crash that happened earlier, but we brought him back to the base. After that, I took the Tuso out because I needed Silica Pearls again for the Quetzal saddle, but on my way, I found an Alpha Mosasaur and decided to kill it. It took quite a while, but eventually I killed it with the Tuso. And then there's this little cave right here, which I went inside of to get some uh, silica pearls and there was a bunch of foliage I had to clear but once I did that I managed to get a ton of silica pearls we had the saddle made for the Quetzal and we were ready to tame that fairy but before I did that I wanted to go to the volcano and see if there's a Giga or Karchar I really wanted to tame one during the 24 hours and I knew I had the stuff too but one literally would not spawn that's why I didn't tame one so that's really sad but I went back to my base and started bringing the Quetzal. I wish they would TLC these Quetzals because I really do like the Quetzal, but over the years it's kind of become redundant because of the RG and it's really slow. So, But it is still useful for things like this, like getting this theory, which I just picked it up. It was right next to my base and then brought it into the trap and then just dropped it in, except for Blueberry was right next to it for some reason. I don't know why they were over there, but I don't know. I just started getting attacked, which is kind of annoying. So he could have died. But I was able to like get on him, but I couldn't move because I was overweight because they still have terrible weight. And then my Quetzal started attacking it, so I had to put it on passive. And then we started knocking it out. Didn't take too long because, like I said a million times, this crossbow is fantastic, so it knocks things out super quickly. 
But then we got the Theri out as well. Put some veggies and a bunch of narcotics in its inventory. It wakes up super quick, so you need a bunch of narcotics. And then I went and put some lamp posts inside of my base to light it up because I thought that would be quite useful. But then as time went on, I only had like 30 minutes left of the challenge and I realized the Theri was not going to tame in time. I did a little tour of all of my stuff. Now that it came to the end, I like showed off every dino and explained all of them at the end of the stream. But I'm not going to show all that because it took forever, but I will show the little base tour and some of the dinos. This is the new Acro from the Arc Editions mod. Pretty sure you guys have all seen it by now. Like the Spino is level 125 in the Arctic. This Rex is level 115. It's the highest level I could find. I wanted to tame a Rex army, but and here's the base build. Small little compact thing. I didn't want, it, want anything too huge or crazy. Got our grill. Got our massive storage system. Everyone thought it was overdone, but I, I mean, we ended up using. Okay, Alex, it's not a good example of it, but I can use a lot of it. It's a good storage system. Got our refining forges, all the metal, smithy, cryo fridge, fabricator, all that. We got our little loft up here with the artifact. The one artifact we managed to get, fireplace, bunk bed, generators up here with our Alpha Rex trophy we killed, and our warm map over here. And the chemistry bench too, which we built recently with our fridge. The, uh, what's it called? Preserving bin used to be here. And then we got our lonely little mortar pestle, which is no longer in use anymore. So yeah, that, oh yeah, we got the walls out signing too, in our little chat. But yeah, that is everything on here. But that is the entire 24-hour challenge. If you made it this far in the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe because this video was quite insane. Definitely the most challenging video I've ever made because trying to stay up for 24 hours, playing this game constantly with no breaks and no sleep is quite crazy. But yeah. I wanted to try and fight the bosses, but since the spawns were messed up, Rexes weren't spawning. And once they did start spawning, they were super low levels, so I couldn't find enough any high levels to tame which meant I couldn't fight the bosses in the small period that I did have. But uh, I might do a part two. This is kind of crazy, but if this video gets 10,000 likes, I think I'll do a part two where I fight all the bosses in 24 hours. It's probably not going to get that much because that's quite an insane number, but that's why I'm putting it out there. If it does somehow get 10,000 likes, I will fight. I'll do 24 hours and fight all the bosses in that 24 hours. So yeah, but that's going to be it. If you guys did enjoy, make sure to leave a like. Also subscribe. Like I said, thanks for watching and bye.